for me, my, my, my approach to life is anything I have today, that's the best I have and that's the opportunity I take. So when I was an intern, the first job I had was in the filing room. Filing, filing room. I was, I was doing filing. And when I was doing the filing, I had a law degree, I had a CPA qualification and I had a CIMA qualification, I had two accounting qualifications and a law degree. I could have looked at that filing job and said, this is below my capabilities. I'm a graduate, I should not be doing filing. But you know, when I went to the filing room, I said, what is the opportunity here? And the opportunity for me was to learn about the business. And I took time to study the files. Two months down the road, we were raising capital. And the CEO decided to administer a quiz on all the staff, on their knowledge of the company. And I scored the highest marks in that quiz because I'd been reading and trying to get knowledge. And that's when he identified me. And so, and when I took the job, I always try, and that's what I do today, to add value. First, you have to add value to yourself, to be able to add value to other people, to have a curious mind, to try to understand the business, to try to understand what it is you're trying to do, and then to offer more than is asked of you. And that is what have, I have consistently done, and that has been my, my philosophy. And so, I joined as an intern in 2001, and in 2005, I was appointed head of investments at Centum. And in 2008, three years later, I was CEO. So from, from, from intern to CEO in seven years. But it's about giving yourself up and serving. But also more importantly, investing in yourself. Young people ask me, what should I invest in? And I tell them the highest return that you can get is when you invest in yourself as a young person, because it's only when you invest in your capabilities. Invest in building the right habits, invest in cultivating the right skills. That's the only way you can be able to add value. And that's what I, I did, and that's what I've strived to do. So when I was appointed CEO, that was not my ultimate. My ultimate was then to add value and say, what is it that can I do with this opportunity? How can I take this opportunity to create an opportunity for others? And every day when I wake up, it's always about how can I take this opportunity to expand the set of opportunities for many more people. So today we've expanded opportunity for people within the business, but also within our portfolio companies. It's what can we do for others? How can we add value? What I found out, when you give, the more you give, the more you receive. And for me, my, my, my role is every day I lead myself. I lead, first you have to lead yourself. Maybe what daily? Lead yourself, I wake up, my day is something like this, I wake up at four in the morning. I then plan my day. I normally plan it every week, but then every day I reflect, what am I going to do today? Because I don't want to be a victim of what happens to me during the day. I want to influence how my day shapes out. And you cannot influence how your day shapes out if you've not first conceived it in your mind and thought about it. So it's about planning, it's about saying what am I going to achieve, but also reflecting. What is it, what did I plan to do, and what did I achieve? Because unless you do that, you can go through life, and you look back two, three years down the road, and you cannot identify one tangible thing that you have achieved. So it's about saying this is the tangible goal I've set myself, I've put it down in writing, in a diary, and reflecting and saying, how am I achieving it? And one of the things I've told my team is that in everything we do, we must have a project plan. We must have a plan that says, we're moving from this point to this point, by this date, with these resources. So that then if you're not on course, you can then determine. You know, Dr. Kirubi spoke about, if you have no plan, you cannot get lost. Because you are really not going anywhere. My second philosophy is, add value. Every day, where can I add value? What can I do to, to add value? Add value to others, add value to the business that I'm, I'm managing, and also learning more about leadership and also practicing leadership and empowering other people. So today you saw my other leadership team, they were here presenting. The people below them are even better. So it's about how do I add value to these people? So that at the end of the day, leadership is not one person. Leadership is, is a teamwork. It's many people. And that's what I've worked, I've been working on creating. For me, my proudest legacy. Because when you see the assets and the profit, that's a result. That is an output. For me, the biggest legacy that I'm proud of at Centre 
that have helped in building an enduring institution and a way of thinking where people believe in themselves and they believe that they can achieve great things. I, I, I hope that if anyone looks back at what we've achieved over the last five years, take that and then say, how can I apply these lessons in anything I'm doing? Because we're all ordinary people who've gone out there and, and really achieved extraordinary things. The average age of my team at Centum is 26 years. I, I turned 36 last month. I'm one of the oldest people in that organization. So these results have actually been achieved by very young people, many of them with less than five years experience. Your people are a mirror of yourself as a leader. When people come and see me and tell me my people are not performing, I tell them, you're looking at yourself. If your people are not performing, you are not performing. People do what they see, not what they hear. So as a leader, the critical thing is walk the talk. If you want people who are hardworking, who are driven, who are committed, who deliver results, ask yourself, am I committed, am I driven, do I deliver results myself? And if you do that, your people will follow. They will emulate uh, your example. For me, that is probably the single most important thing that I would share with uh, any other leader. The second important thing is invest in your people. Leadership is about creating an environment where people can thrive and enjoy. Spend time to create an environment for your people where they can enjoy and, and thrive and really come out in their best. Take, I take the flag for people. I say, I'm here to take all fault I take, all credit I give. My role is to create an environment where these people that we have, the leadership team that I have and the people that are supporting them can really shine and to celebrate them and to let them and to let them shine and I can take a back seat. I think uh, when I look back at my life, uh, I don't have, actually I have no regrets. I've been a very blessed uh, person. I have had a lot of opportunities that uh, many other people have not had access to. I have had excellent mentors. Uh, Moria today is a sum total of many people that I've worked with, some of whom are in the room today. Uh, people have had an, a chance to work with very, very closely. And the sum total of people who are a lot more experienced than I am. And I've learned a lot uh, from them. So for me, I, I have nothing to regret. What I probably want to say is what can I reinforce? What don't I want to lose? What I don't want to lose is my hunger. Hunger for knowledge, hunger for growth, hunger for development. Today where I am, it's easy to say and say I've reached, but I'm still hungry. I want more. I want more for my people. I want to achieve more. And I pray that in, my, in the course of the journey of my life, I don't lose that hunger to want to achieve more, to want to do more, to want to help and add value to people even more. I got a lot of encouragement from my mom. I remember one time when I was probably 16 years, I was going to see a, a general manager of, uh, of a company. And I told him, you know, mom, I'm not sure. What am I going to tell the general manager? And he told me, what do you mean? You are as good as him. One day, you're going to become a general manager or a CEO. So for me, it was not unusual. In my own uh, dreams and one I wrote in my diary, I had targeted that one day I'll become a CEO. And I always say, I prepare for the position I'll hold in the future. I'm preparing for the man I will be, not the man I am today. And I dream of bigger things. I can we can achieve more. So it's, uh, for me, it's not, you cannot achieve what you do not conceive in your mind. And everything we've achieved, we first conceived in our minds and we've believed in it. And then you work now towards uh, achieving it.